1918, the voice of the guns spoke. From a thousand mouths, it barked a challenge to the enemy. It was the voice of massed guns that made possible the hammer blows of that August, which preceded victory. Over 20 years, and the voice must speak again from every muzzle of every type of gun. The Stokes was familiar to the old soldiers as it is now to the new. But whilst in principle it is the same, in detail it is much changed and more efficient. Its lightness and mobility is its first characteristic, and being exceptionally simple to operate and having a range of nearly a mile, it's an invaluable infantry weapon. you can see the speed of fire. Progress in tank construction demanded progress in methods of tank destruction, and anti-tank guns became as mobile as the tanks themselves. Soon unloaded, the gun is quickly run into position, and the two-pound shells speeding on their way. The almost gentle pop of discharge belies the power of the anti-tank gun whose shells can fight through the enemy's armor. At the moment, their accuracy is directed against a target. Still another type, with wheels dismantled to give even greater steadiness, accuracy and deadliness. The fast-moving dummy tank cannot dodge the fire of tracer shells. Development is rapid these days, and the tractor-borne anti-tank gun can tackle road or rough country to get into position. That the gun can be fired from the tractor on the move is an added danger to the opposition, especially when armor-piercing shells are used. It's a dual-purpose gun, and in a trice can be changed from anti-tank to anti-aircraft. Belt-fed, it becomes either a single shot or quick fire. Anti-aircraft defense has developed as rapidly as anti-tank, and such posts as this are familiar sights all over Great Britain. With everything that military science can put into them, these high-powered guns are marvels of precision. With the rangefinder getting distance and the predictor calculating speed and course, the gun is accurately laid. Then the famous 3.7 barks into action. Its 28-pound shells can be fired to the almost unbelievable height of 40,000 feet, seven miles into the sky. Like giant machine guns, the latest Beaufort's anti-aircraft guns can spout out their shells at the rate of 120 per minute. Loaded with clips of shells, even while the gun is still firing, its speed is amazing. Easy to handle, it can follow the swiftest target. Over the large barrel, a Bryn gun is mounted to deal with close or low-flying planes. Altogether, a formidable defense weapon. The Bren gun is worth more detailed examination. Weighing only 21 pounds, it is entirely unaffected by water or rough handling. A spare barrel is carried so that when the firing barrel gets hot, it can be changed in a few seconds and allowed to cool. Loading is by magazine holding 30 rounds, the work of barely two seconds. 
480 rounds a minute is the rate of fire, either from its small attached stand or a separate tripod for even more deadly accuracy. With what might be called the artillery proper, you will see in these tests that mobility and speed of getting into action are the keynotes. This 105 mm or 4.2 inch field gun has a quick release coupling and easily opened split trail. Slow motion shows the smooth recoil when the shell has speeded away on its 10 mile course. It can fire right or left of its center traverse up to 25 degrees either way. All the features of the field gun are contained in the six inch howitzer, including the wide field of fire. The high angle is, of course, the feature of howitzer to lob it over hills or drop them more steeply into instruments. Shells as well as guns have to be tested. This 15 inch monster is being loaded with a half ton shell to be fired at point blank range at armor plating. The propellant charge follows the shell, the breech is closed, and soon everything is ready to test gun, shell, and armor at the same time. That is power indeed. Returning to field guns, the first characteristic, as we have said, is mobility, whether along road or over field. Tractor drawn, they combine the maneuverability of a horse team with the speed and sureness of the modern engine. The primary purpose of field guns is to support infantry in moving warfare, and they must therefore have lightness as well as mobility. These 18-pounders meet all the requirements. They can lay down a barrage, fire at unseen targets, or use open sights at a close enemy, and are capable of a round every five seconds. Tracer shells show the fine accuracy of both guns and gunners. The 4.5 field howitzers are pneumatic tired, a refinement undreamt of a few years ago. Firing at a high angle, the barrel must be returned to the horizontal for reloading, and a quick release mechanism makes speedy work of it. The 18-pounders normally have a much lower trajectory, their fire being more direct than the howitzers. With the 6-inch howitzer, you can see the working more clearly. The smooth perfection of a well-trained gun crew as they handle the giant yet delicately balanced machine. This howitzer is in the medium artillery class and is one of the largest of mobile gun units, firing a 100-pound shell. Even the 9.2 howitzer comes into the mobile class in that it can change its position and not necessarily require a built emplacement. Its heavy shell is lifted to the breech by cradle and the gun crew rams it home. Now the firing charge and everything is set ready. In a different category are the 9.2 coastal guns, stationary instead of mobile units. With their terrific power and range, they symbolize the voice of the guns as they boom their warning.
Throughout the whole range of guns that modern warfare demands, Britain is prepared. In every tone and varied key, the voice of the guns shouts its reply to the challenge of Britain's enemies. 